So I'm, uh, I'm David Dixon. Um, I'm the pastor of care and counseling here at uh, Carmel Counseling Center. I'm here with um, Wendy Skinderi, who's our uh, director of counseling and a minister uh, at Carmel. And then Dr. Clay Barnes, who is our, our guest here. You know, Wendy and I have been dialoguing about um, just different questions folks might have during the pandemic. And one of them was, how do we care for our adult parents? So adult children caring for their adult, adult parents during this uh, pandemic. And so we asked um, Clay Barnes, Dr. Clay Barnes to join us. And Clay, that's really my first question. I think when you, when you um, think parents and older, our older parents is uh, we're taking care of them that you kind of have this continuum of uh, on one side, the, the overzealous parent who might not be taking the um, the pandemic as serious, and then maybe on the other end of the continuum, someone who's kind of overrun with some anxiety. But with that first first thought, what what how could a adult child care for their parent who might not be taking it uh, as serious as as some? Yeah, I think there you're asking. Uh, it's a great question. And one of the things I would encourage the adult children to try to discern is, is my parent not taking it seriously because they don't believe it's a serious issue? Kind of, you take that to the extreme and it's the conspiracy. Somebody's created a conspiracy here. It's a government overreach. Or is it that they don't care if they get sick because they're at the end of life and really want, especially if they're believers, they don't care about getting sick and potentially even dying and going on to heaven. So trying to discern which of those you're dealing with becomes really important. Mm. Good, good. So on the other side of that, what if they are taking this quite seriously and they are sequestered in their homes and they are either feeling intense angst and anxiety and um, worry and, or they're feeling much loneliness by not being able to be with family and people the way they were before. What, what would you say to that? Well, again, I think there are two questions that you're asking. And, and the first is at what level are my parents in, in terms of cognitive functioning? In other words, are they, are they somewhere on the spectrum of um, some level of dementia? Because as we know, as most people know as you progress in dementia, you become more and more like children. And so if your aging parent is cognitively strong, cognitively healthy, then I think anything that you do in terms of Zooming, especially with grandkids and, and making that a regular appointment, making that 10 o'clock every morning, I, I encourage parents, make that part of your school is that we're gonna reach out to Nana and granddaddy, or we're gonna reach out to, to them. If your parent is in some level of dementia and they're kind of responding more as a child, you treat that as a child. And one of the things that we do with that, that we do over and over is you give them just enough information about what's going on that will satisfy them. So they may be anxious simply because they don't have information. Again, this is one of those I think we overreach with too much news. A lot of our elderly parents, the only way they're getting their news is through some online broadcast or, or TV, and, and they don't have a balance of what's going on right around them. So, yeah, that, that um, once a man, twice a child really applies to, to this. And, Absolutely. You know, I've noticed that with, um, in, in my own life, so... Um, any do's and don'ts of caregiving, particularly when you're dealing with your, your aging parents? I mean, I think there are times where we, we cross over boundaries and just making folks aware of, of that. Yeah. I, and I, to me, the biggest don't is even if they are in some level of dementia, don't treat them like a child. Don't speak to them like a child. You give them the information that you would a child, but you don't speak to them that way. The other thing that I would say is a don't is you don't have to rehash the news with them. Mm. They're going to want to kind of talk about the news and just 
shift it if you can, shift it to how the kids are doing. Shift it, especially if they have grandkids. This is what we did today. This is what we did with school. And let them be part of that process as opposed to the process of the, of the pandemic. Mm. They're going to feel anxiety because they're just as unknown as we are. They're, they're in that unknown place. So uh, acknowledge that, but it's kind of distract when you can distract to something that's positive, like grandkids. As, as a grandfather myself, I love just doing the, the Zoom or the time with the grandkids. Now, the one, the one do or don't on that is if you as a family are not completely isolating with your kids, then a definite don't is they can't physically see their grandparents. That's not fair to the grandparents if you're not sure where your kids, who they have or haven't been around for the last, say, two weeks. So that's the caveat I put in there. Remember, this is a, a pandemic that's disproportionately affecting older people. That's some good advice. Um, Clay, what would you suggest for those who are really struggling with dealing with the complexities of this issue, helping their, uh, their parents, their older parents, what would you suggest if, if they're struggling with this and need to get some help? A couple things that I'd say there. Self-care becomes really important. This is like anything else. As a caregiver, you have got to take care of yourself. A lot of our respite means are not available as the pandemic's going on. So you've got to be extra special careful to, to get whatever help just so people know, and I think um, Pastor Alex has made this known and, and David Bass has made it known, our counseling center is open. It is functioning. Now we are doing most of what we do via telehealth and our counselors would be more than glad to meet with, with any aging parents. You could help them as a caregiver set up a telehealth conference. We can walk you through those steps. It, it actually is is pretty simple. Now for them, it might be overwhelming. If you could, if you've set up with them a Zoom, you can set up a telehealth conference. You just may need to help them walk through the steps. But, but if you want to make the call to the counseling center, you can call, leave a message. Somebody will be back in touch with you uh, very quickly with how to set up a telehealth or a teleconference with your parents. That's great. Great information. And in, you can reach out through through the website www.carmelcounselingcenter.org or there's a inquiry on there www.carmelinquiry at carmelbaptist.org. So, and I think David, they can also get information straight through the Carmel Baptist website if they're just more familiar with going there. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Well, thanks, Clay. We we always. Um, enjoy hearing your wisdom and appreciate your time today. Thank you. I appreciate it. Appreciate being asked. Thank you.